Today's talk focuses on the introduction of the semi. We have some rolling footage of the truck in platoon mode, as well as the standard footage that was available during the intro. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight, and this is our special The Semi Just Came Out issue, and wanted to take some time and review the details of what emerged this evening. I guess our list will go Roadster uh, to start and then jump into the trucks to cover uh, the details that were provided on the vehicle currently, and then we can get into uh, more as it's revealed over time. So first of all, the big surprise was the introduction of the Roadster that will be available in 2020. Uh, I think it looks like your standard uh, high-speed vehicle. Uh, the details provided included a 1.9 second 0 to 60. I was a bit surprised by this because I actually thought that uh, Tesla was going to stay out of the performance zone on a permanent basis and just focus on the Model 3. But it's nice to see the Roadster will arrive and that it can do some damage at 1.9 uh, is pretty impressive. And I'm also happy because <clears throat> um, we've been hearing a lot of yak from Porsche about its Model E performance. And uh, it'll be fun to see how they deal with that 1.9 second 0 to 60. So this makes it kind of fun and interesting. The other notable point there was a 600 mile range for the vehicle is wow that's pretty awesome and uh, I, I believe it was 250 kW that they're able to get that done so the vehicle is fairly light uh, and it's an illustration of the potential of what can be done with the 2170 battery at the apex of performance so the nice looking vehicle looks great Moving on to the semi-truck, Tesla decided to come in with a 500-mile range semi looking to tote 80,000 pounds. Um, the uh, suggestion was that this vehicle, um, or ma another major development that was presented, is the fact that they're doing a mega charger, which is, I guess, above the supercharger. This allows the truck to get 400 miles of range in 30 minutes. So I'm stunned, stunned amazed, wowed. Folks on Wall Street, etc., had been anticipating that Tesla would be in the battery swap business. But um, while that sounds like a good idea and it could be done, uh, it's nice to see that 30 minute recharge because that's about how long it would take if you swap the batteries out anyway. And I think that uh, it cuts down on your sort of work headache if you're able to just get it done um, as a charge situation in 30 minutes and have the vehicles gone from there. The next uh, sort of issue that I'm choosing to cover in no particular order is there's some interior photos that were provided and images. Uh, we're looking at two touch screens uh, that the driver uses. Uh, with a driver in a central seating position with passenger seating more like a jump seat. So, you know, kind of an interesting configuration. You know, I don't, it's one of those things where as soon as you have a electric truck and then you're having that vehicle be able to go 500 miles, uh, I just think that's mind-blowingly awesome. So, um, you know, how it looks inside is irrelevant to me, but I guess it's kind of interesting to see the driver in the middle rather than to the left uh, of, you know, sitting left. And, uh, you know, ex as expected, a lot of sensors, as we uh, presented in the interior of the Mercedes, Mercedes has now adopted the screen uh, strategy that uh, Tesla has been using for quite a while with all its vehicles. And it's once again on a screen the uh, nature of the screens being used look alike, like what's in the Model 3 and having two of them available to monitor engine performance was interesting. 
another detailed point about the truck is the fact that uh, they're going for four-wheel drive at all four wheels uh, behind the, the driver. I'm, um, I have to admit that uh, this is great. Uh, again, it's not a big deal as long as the truck can get the 500 miles necessary uh, to make it a true long-haul vehicle. I, I think it's great. Um, the one thing I keep trying to figure out about the tr truck myself and have been since the photo introduced that we got was that what we found with the Mercedes uh, ver versions of the vehicle is that there are some uh, customers that wanted uh, less miles, in less range, bigger batteries, or bigger batteries, more range, or less battery, so it wouldn't take as much freight up and giving up some of the range so that they could pick up the weight in freight rather than having it sit there in batteries all the time. So I guess one of the things I was kind of looking at is how Tesla would address flexing the vehicle based on range or weight as the customers might want. But yeah, it's a minor point, somewhat irrelevant. If you if you think about it, the fact that it exists itself is quite awesome. The next uh, issue that popped up is that uh, you know <clears throat> I didn't get any sense for when we'd see these in the hands of customers and in motion. The only customer statement I saw was that Old Dominion, the fourth largest shipper in the country, uh, that does sort of less than full loads is saying that they're not going to uh, take, not interested or taking early deliveries on this type of a vehicle. Kind of makes sense because, um, frankly, I really think that um, it doesn't make sense right now for smaller players in the industry to try to go after this vehicle because um, all the big companies have way more dollars to go after it. And I think they have the infrastructure to build their own uh, uh, solar power production so that the cost of energy is actually going to be fairly low to non-existent if you're able to do your own you know solar farm uh, to provide electricity for your truck so you really need concentration uh, to make that sort of whole process work I believe unless you're just producing throwing it up on the grid and, and then having uh, utilities ship it to you uh, once you've produced it yourself. Um, I'm, another note that I made regarding uh, this whole thing was the fact that, you know, there's there's a, a backup at the Gigafactory right now of batteries and where should they go and I'm hopeful these trucks can start getting those batteries while the Gigafactory is sort of waiting on the rest of the Model 3 supply chain to be completed and ready to roll to get cars out. Um, I, you know, will be obviously making more posts as more details are revealed over time. Um, it's great to see the Tesla Semi here. Um, I'm including, as, uh, as you'll see, um, there's rolling footage over my shoulder that I've created for all the video that Tesla has provided us. And, uh, hope you'll find, uh, some of that kind of interesting particularly the platooning of trucks seems to be a big focus that Tesla has right now. Um, and then I don't think they'll let them do autonomous, but in Europe uh, there is a testing going on with platooning where there's a driver in the lead truck but not the, the following two. So if this were to occur, uh, efficiency I think would definitely improve quite dramatically. Um, I guess Tesla was also referencing the fact that uh, if it's not loaded, the truck can do 0 to 60 in 5 seconds. But when it's fully loaded, it's about a 20 minute uh, or 20 second uh, 0 to 60, which, um, you know, is nice. You know, it's nice to have. I don't see it as being a huge deal uh, because um, all the other things that the truck can do, particularly the fact that it's an electric truck, and cuts fuel costs so dramatically. I just think it's, uh, you know, nice, but not a big deal. Look forward to your comments. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please like and subscribe. Tschüss, Max, gut, au revoir, le